more towards you know the uh, dark steel or blight steel variety yeah. rather than the metalwork <laughs> variety. <laughs> Right. As far I'll, as I'll even take the Frexian <laughs> variant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Um, what's our next card? Oh, Panharmonicon. I want to make sure. Cool. Uh, we yeah, Panharmonicon, uh, which is apparently the musical instrument of choice on Kaladesh, um, which makes me. I assume it sounds a lot like the the Jabba's Palace organ. Like do 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 <laughs> like uh, so. Panharmonicon is uh, for generic for an artifact. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent, you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time. So I really actually feel like the Panharmonicon sounds like the uh, um, the music from uh, oh the Nolan film about dreams. Oh, Inception. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. Um, yeah, this card is pretty interesting. Um, you know, there's a number of cool things that can trigger in this set. I've seen people using this with things like um, um, the 2-3 the Death Touch uh, creature in this set, the black creature that you get to look at the top four cards of your opponent's library. Um, I've seen it worked with uh, Kalidus, getting some sweet uh, sweet zombie action. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I did see it... Uh, uh, was it um, Thought Not Seer? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a pretty gross one. So this is like the reverse of, uh, what's that card in Modern? Uh, I'm thinking of it. Turns uh, off, you think turns of it off, Torp Orb? Torp, yeah, it's yeah. like a reverse Torp Orb. <laughs> so it, it costs twice as much, but does double the, the abilities instead of shutting off the abilities. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can, go off, you can go off twice as hard with uh, Splinter Twin with this card. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know, this card seems sweet, but four man has a lot to get this in, in like, the, the rest of your deck has to really be working pretty hard. I'm just realizing there are a lot of, like, four man artifact build-around cards yeah. in this. Like, we've already talked about four of them. Yeah, do you know what card really wanted this card? Grey Merchant. Oh, man, look at that. Look at that synergy yeah. right there. I, I don't think this is this will be a constructed card, but this is, like, a casual favorite. Oh, yeah, you, you'll, you'll definitely see, like, kitchen table decks that... Are built around. Are like, playing the Panharmonicon? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good old Panharmonicon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a creature is sent to the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> just like a, I just wanted to be like a giant harmonica. That's all. <laughs> like, just like playing the blues. <laughs> <laughs> Had a trigger ability. <laughs> <laughs> Had it happen twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know when it happens two times. <laughs> Baby, it's twice as nice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did it good. congratulations good. oh I'm pretty happy about that one alright can we move on to the real card now <laughs> yeah this one is uh, going to be Scrap Heap Scra- Scrounger alright Scrap Heap Scrounger is a two mana artifact creature construct I'm getting all the constructs tonight uh, it's a 3-2 so two mana 3-2 can't block uh, has the ability of uh, colorless and black Exile another creature card from your graveyard. Return Scrap Heap Scrounger from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, um, this is another card that I kind of overlooked when I first looked at the set, but, I mean, 2 mana, 3-2 is pretty aggressive. Um, the fact that it can't block is, it's not great, but, uh, I mean, this is a card that you can, you know, if you are an aggressive deck, you can kind of just suicide into your opponent's board and not really care about it, because you can bring it back. Um, it's also, um, Pretty important as just uh, an artifact for the decks that care about having artifacts in play. Yeah, remember that card to Spoiler Souls? Yeah, remember. Yeah, it was like remember better in every a lot way of play? possible. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, okay, we really need to figure out how to make this card see play. Yeah, the and they, they did it. They made it colorless and, and, and uh, you know, have one more toughness uh, and uh, made it easier to bring it back. So, yeah, they basically were like, oh, let's just strictly improve everything about this card. <laughs> and it turns out that's what they needed to do. So on Kaladesh, they $6 million man to spoil their souls. <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, but, yeah, th- this card is uh, you know, pretty good. Um, I've seen some lists that are, uh, you know, mainly red-white lists that are trying to stretch uh, by playing Aether Hubs and um, the black-white fast lane to try and even, you know, splash the activated ability, um, which I... And honestly, I think like that is fairly viable. Um, but you know, this card is great against you know wrath uh, effects because you, you basically are able to you know 
bring it back, and there's no like timing clause or anything like that with it. It's just you know, end of turn. I'll just do this. Yeah, it's also a great pilot for your vehicles as well. Yeah, it can drive a car real well. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, if you don't have a great attack, like if you don't want to suicide it into your opponent's board, well, it can't block, so you might as well crew a vehicle. Yeah, you know, it's it, not going it, to matter. It'll, it'll drop in, the, in your your flagship and steer yeah. that around. Put it on a captain's hat. <laughs> I gotta say, vehicles are great just for the visuals. Oh, like, yeah. you, like you just picture it in your head. You're like, man, it has a this sense. robot thing. Just like, how is this driving? I don't know. <laughs> it just integrates, right? So the best is when you crew something and then you like sacrifice the creature that crewed it. So it's just like ghost pilot. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Can you? Uh, I don't know if this says it on the car, but can you crew the same vehicle twice? Can you, like, crew it, and then after it's a, a creature, you can crew it again? I don't think there's anything that I says you, you can, can. Right? Yeah, I think you can. Okay. Just wondering. <laughs> Is that, I don't know when you uh, want to do that. Uh, when you ever cool somebody's turn, and you want to tap their board <laughs> for some yeah, stupid then reason? They, then they no, get a, you want to do it because it's cool. All right? Yeah. I don't Maybe know. there's some like mesmeric orb shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't check the 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 rules text that, um, on that as far as I, that that goes. So. I, I suppose if you really needed to, you could just crew and then in response crew again. I, yeah, but I guess if you wanted to, I don't yeah, know, whatever. Um, All right. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, Grounder's good. Uh, I think the card will see play. Uh, I don't think you even have to be like a, a base black deck. Um, to really see the benefit of it, just having a three-two like big body on turn two is is fine. Yeah, and there are actually a decent number of black aggressive creatures in this set that care about artifacts. So I mean, maybe there's something there. There could be, for sure. Um, but uh, ready to move on. Gonna get on the uh, the the airplane and don't know when I'll be coming back again on <laughs> this uh, the airship <laughs> Sky Sovereign Council's flagship. So this is just Dalton's airship from Chrono Trigger, right? It is any like various any airship Final from Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Yeah. yeah, no, it's Dalton's ship. I don't care what you. Think. <laughs> Anything that Sid made in a Final <laughs> yeah. Fantasy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I imagine whoever first. whoever's crewing that. Their name is now Sid. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> um, all right, so Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, five generic for a legendary artifact vehicle. This is a six-five flying. Uh, you know, again, not a creature until you crew it. It's a crew cost of three. Also has uh, a lovely ETB effect. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Uh, so, and this is a mythic. So this is this is the big fat fatty of uh, of you know ships of vehicles, if you will. Yeah, this is the uh, the, the you know the uh, you know, top of the line high end you know vehicle. If you got money to burn, this is what you buy. <laughs> Let's be honest. This is you know, we we made a fun fantasy. This is the star destroyer of vehicles. Like yeah. it shows up, pews some lasers. <laughs> <laughs> it's ominous in the background of the sky. Like, what's that triangular shaped? Oh no! <laughs> yes, this is exactly what what that what that is. It's even piloted by like the the bad guys, quote unquote. Oh yeah, like. absolutely. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so this is like where we we get to like the the crew cost of three. And um, you know, when you really take a look at what creatures could actually crew this, it, it gets to this weird territory where it's like it might not even be creatures you want to have crewing this right yeah i so yeah i i was really high on a flagship and kind of worried about it i thought like man you give the six five flyer to any color and it's still like breaking you know the color pie on this kind of creature but crew cost of three you know it, on a thing that costs five you know we talked about the mana rock and i said the crew cost of three is prohibitive there but you can use the card this one sits dormant. Now, granted, the the attack trigger is huge for this card. It, you know, it, it does a lot of damage when it when it attacks. But it, you know, being that hard to crew, you know, with the mana rock, you don't feel as you know pressured or compelled to you know because you you played it on turn three for as as a land essentially. This one though, like you want it to be attacking, so your board it needs to be set up to attack. Um, I have not seen this card being put into the right deck so far from what I've seen people doing with it, and. I'll be very honest. I've had a flagship in play against me many times so far. I've never been attacked by one. Hmm. And, and I and granted, you know, early testing. You know, I'm not going to say my anecdotal evidence is anywhere near. But I have seen a lot of people use. Like, I don't know if people are building around this card correctly yet because that crew cost of three is prohibitive. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, we in, in this set we do have a lot of like red white creatures uh, like Dapala, like the what veteran motorist or something like that. That that do have the three power, which you know they they can certainly pull it off. Um, but there's like the dwarves can fly the largest ship. 
Correct. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, so in this in this story, are the dwarves like aligned with the console or with the resistance, or are they just so? Kind of there? I'm not totally sure. They are definitely the pilots, uh, and the pilot from from what we read of the last week's story, they seem to sort of be like there's a sort of underbelly of just like racing for fun, and that's what they do. So I see them more as like jockeys, if you will. Uh, now, the, granted, they do seem to be on the side of like the, the rebellion, but I don't see them as like active participants. They're just having fun. Yeah, and, and but there are some ones that are, are definitely console lined as well. You know that we'll, we even talk about. Oh yeah, like the Ninth Bridge Patrol or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. That is okay. true. So I think like they're the 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 the, the kind of bridge between I mean, they're just they're technically just a race on or i guess a species on the planet so yeah they don't necessarily have to be you they, know good or bad aligned okay i was just wondering so I, you know obviously card is very powerful but i rank this behind uh our next uh you know vehicle <laughs> by far and also fleet wheel cruiser yeah I, you know, I think, this is the third you know this is this is the one that i this this card will see play i just don't know what you play it in i think it could be like a, a decent enough sideboard card potentially um you know, uh, another good you know sideboard card to main deck card can pilot this pretty well, which is Thalia, which is sure. another thing to consider. Um, but uh, that that's sort of been like the best thing that I can think of for like an aggressive deck that isn't dwarf based to use. It, it, I, could, I could agree with you on the sideboard clause. Like, could you imagine if like Bank Company from last season had this out of the board? Yeah, you know what I mean. And if you get to any of those sort of mid range matchups, this is the kind of card that you do want to bring in that just like sort of dominates the board because your creatures aren't attacking your silver advocates aren't attacking into each other but they could be piloting a sweet sky ship um so another card that is actually a really good pilot for this card is um the lupine prototype we get it you no, want your werewolf butler driver no I no the, one of the other werewolf one of the other wolves is lamp pacifist well, that's actually true. a fantastic pilot for this card uh, I, I i can't attack i'm a pacifist what about driving a missile ship? Oh, okay, yeah, I could be convinced. I'm just driving. I'm not necessarily. I'm not inherently we're, hurting we're anyone. We're not like killing anything with the ability, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Of no, course no, not. No, no, no. Uh, no, no well, they can't you're not see doing it. it. It's the ship. They, yeah. Lambo passes if you turned off your targeting computer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so right. that's been an interesting thing to think about. Uh, but we, we, we've saved the the best, uh, you know, for last. We have the smuggler's copter. Dave, get to the chopper. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, so Mike, you mentioned that like you had never been attacked by a sky sovereign. Well, I imagine you'd be attacked many times by this card. Many times. Uh, so smuggler's, many times. <laughs> smuggler's copter is a uh, two mana artifact vehicle, three three. Um, it's flying. Whenever a smuggler's copter attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. It has a crew cost of one. Also known as the best crew cost. Uh, well, this, mean, this card is zero. Nuts. Would be like uh, but we don't have any zero crews yet. <laughs> Maybe this, in the next set. This is the, the just this card is just absolutely bonkers. I I have fallen in love with this card. Yeah. So um, this is a card that I expect to see in many different decks. Uh, obviously, very good in an aggressive deck that has a lot of creatures in it. Um, I could you know I think it'd be good mid range. Um, it allows decks that don't normally have flying to have a flying threat. Uh, you know, it helps you to dodge mass removal um, since you know it doesn't die to wrath effects. Um, so you can you know recover rather easily by you know playing a creature on the, the follow up turn and then attacking again. Um, the fact that this triggers on blocks it like doesn't really make any sense to me, but it's like okay, sure. Like <laughs> they like it wasn't good enough. They're like oh let's put a block trigger on there too. Yeah, sure, why not. I always picture, like, Wario flying away in the Smuggler's yeah. Copter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just doing that, exactly. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, the crew cost in this is absurd. And that's uh, obviously what makes it, uh, it so good. Um, uh, if uh, if this was, like, crew, like, two, like, it would still be all right. But, man, crew one, just, like, your random servo tokens, your, your th- you can upgrade your Thopters. Like, yeah. uh, it's so gross. It's so disgusting. And, like, um we mentioned Thraben Inspector. Yeah, too. Inspector is like everyone can can drive this. This this must be like uh, what everyone learns how to drive in in Kaladesh <laughs> in the beginning. They're like, well, we would normally start you out with cars, but actually, this copter is really easy yeah. to fly. Yeah, you're not quite ready for the Sky Sovereign yet, but hey, we have this nice uh, Honda Civic <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> we got this nice one seater. It's uh, you know pretty pretty comfortable and uh, very easy. Just one joystick. It's fine. It's like playing a video game. <laughs> So maybe what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to like make it as like like 
techy steampunky as possible, right? So as you take your your serve bot and you make it crew your smuggler's copter, and then they fly it up to the console flagship, and then your smuggler's copter crews the Sky yes. Sovereign, yes. and that's it. <laughs> we did it. And when the Sky Sovereign comes down, you see the smuggler's copter eject as Doctor Wily gets away. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, this card's one of the you know best cards, if not the best card in the set. I've I've heard that already thrown about uh, by a lot of people. I think uh, I think that's what no, myself included. <laughs> I think that's what uh, like Chapin said even yeah. in uh, the most recent uh, uh, episode of uh, Top Level. So uh, and I I believe it. This card is is the truth. Uh, it, it started out pre-ordering at three dollars two ninety nine at Star City. It's uh it's at nine ninety nine today. Yeah, it's, it's two dollars. Yeah. Oh man, I feel really good. About oh, we all we all pre-ordered. Pre-ordered it. Yeah, we yeah. all did. Yeah. Uh, you got it for three. I think we both, uh, Morgan and I bought it at five. But five, and five is still. I was, like, yeah, I was in early really on. That one, yeah, so, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, so you mentioned Doctor Wily's. Uh, I, I, I picture Doctor Robotnik from Sonic. <laughs> oh yeah, this is also true. Yeah, this is definitely his like little little egg shuttle. <laughs> this is definitely what this is. And now I would just want alters of them to all be that. Now, all right, thank so you. So can we get one, okay? One is going to be the, the the egg shuttle, Doctor. You know, one is going to be the capsule shuttle, Doctor Wily. One's going to be like the um, the Bowser shuttle with like the wind up key oh, in the yeah, back yeah, with the clown face. Uh, you know, yeah. What's the fourth one then? I think I it has know. to be the the Guardians of the Galaxy ship, like when they go. Okay, all right, that's not bad. The, the I, I want to keep with the villain theme, though. Can we think uh, of another okay. villain that escapes via a small flying machine? Hit us up on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we need to know because I actively might do this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Get your, your ten dollars smugglers copters altered. So, uh, uh, but you know, final thoughts. Good card. Um, great card. Uh, great card. Great yeah. card. And uh, we'll be seeing so many play. So much play throughout the entirety we, of standard. We didn't even mention like madness, you know, enabler. Oh, all yeah. this. it does everything. It was... <laughs> the the looting in an aggressive deck, like dear lord, like oh, do I need to hit my land drops? Great, I'm going to do this. Oh, do yeah. I have my flooding? Great, let's draw spells. Yeah. Like ah, it's, it's just, absurd. It's insane. All right, uh, artifacts. Actually, you know, in this set, uh, there definitely are going to be a lot of them. You'll see them a lot in your limited games, and um, you'll you'll see a lot of them in all honesty in your constructed games. Uh, and I think uh, there's an artifact for at least every kind of deck that people would want to play, which is you know awesome to see. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the puzzle knots, and I do think that like at least two of those are pretty constructive playable. Yeah, the green close. one and the blue one both make a lot of energy and have an effect that's worthwhile, especially if you're in like the, the Aetherworks Marvel deck. Uh, so, yeah. Um, sweet, sweet artifacts. You know, we talk about like how we've had artifact sets before. This one really feels though like artifacts from like they did a good job hitting the flavor of like Inventor. I think it's great. I think so too. Um, so let's move into the multicolor cards. Um, so uh, first we have Dapala, Pilot Exemplar. The website's crashing for me. Dapala, I know, is a uh, red uh, one, a red and a white and a generic uh, for a three-three legendary creature, Dwarf Pilot, um, which is pretty insane. The art on this is like actually unreal. Uh, that art almost makes me want to go play WoW again just from looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, it was, I, I, know, I know it's crazy, but uh, also on, I need to slide my laptop over so I can share with Dave. Sorry, my iPad's dying. Uh, anyway, so uh, she has a, a bunch of awesome text, though. So other dwarves you control get plus one, plus one. So she's a lord. Each ve- a vehicle you control gets plus one, plus one, as long as it's a creature. So she's a vehicle lord, too. I, don't, I actually know how that one works. Just like like you, you turn the engine on the car, and it's like your, your car is like uh, Knight Rider. And it's just like... <laughs> Is that the Paula I see? No, no, it just has the premium gas. Uh, she, yeah, she yeah. just puts the premium <laughs> gas. She's got like a sweet wrench that she just hits on it and makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she has a, a cool attack trigger, a trigger. So it says whenever DePaula Pilot Exemplar becomes tapped. I guess I'm sorry, not even attack trigger. It's a tap trigger. So when she cruises as well, you may pay X. If you do, reveal the top X cards of your library and put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into your hand. Then put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. And you know, while the, you know, there's not a huge amount of dwarves that are really cl- like constructed playable yet. You've got enough and enough vehicles that like that trigger, especially you know if you've just got a bunch of mana late in the game. Can you know? Can be a, you know, even if it's a draw one or draw two. All you did was crew a vehicle, and that's pretty good. Yeah, like I, I think there are a, a decent number of dwarfs. I don't know. I don't think there's enough to make like a dwarf deck right now. But even if you're just playing like smugglers, copters, and toolcraft exemplars, you know, as your other ways to like pump other things. I mean, and, and this gives you a way to. Late in the game, you know, can maybe give you a little bit of value by paying the X. I mean, three mana, three three. It's not terrible. Um, so, 
Yeah, I, 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 I don't know which flavor of red white is the best, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this in do a lot you, of constructed decks. Do you understand how happy it makes me to hear you say, "I don't know which flavor of red white is the best"? <laughs> Meaning, mean, there's multiple there's flavors, multiple of, flavors red of red white. Dave, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> yeah, it'll be uh, interesting, you know, if this, uh, you know, more dwarf and vehicle-focused, you know, version of Red White wins out against the, um, you know, less focus on that, more focus on the one-drop aggressive type builds uh, kind of wins out. But um, it, it's interesting that both can be perfectly viable and uh, attack on different axes, basically. Yeah. Um, and are both aggressive decks, so you kind of play what you want. And um, I, I think the big surprising thing is that uh, overall, I think that, you know, sort of the vehicle and, you know, crewing aspect, uh, at least with the, you know, powerful vehicles, has kind of taken off and been accepted, which is, you know, fairly interesting. And uh, I, I, you could, you had the, uh, you know, you, you had the right to be skeptical in the beginning when you, they first got, you know, sort of announced and uh, it, it seemed to actually have come together. Uh, it's also the Depaul is also the kind of card that you know maybe okay right now, but you never know what else we're going to get. Nathan Revolt that may immediately make her you know, like all of a sudden you yeah. have a couple more dwarves that are worth playing, and you know one more vehicle to go along with Smoker's Copter, and all of a sudden she's she's a four of and you know in a pretty powerful deck. So honestly, it doesn't even take that many more dwarves. I no. think it's really close right now. So if you get like one more good dwarf, I think it's definitely there. Yeah. So. All um, right. Next up, Dogen right, we'll Bon. Yeah, first planeswalker Monster. that we're going to talk about here. So. And uh, we, we already talked about him a little bit as well um, previously. We can re- refresh the memory. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a uh, two generic white blue for a planeswalker. Dovin uh, comes into play with three loyalty. Has a plus one of until your next turn, up to one target creature gets minus three minus zero, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Has a minus one of uh, Kill of Filigree Familiar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's minus seven is you get an emblem with your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during their untap step. Um, the minus one is, uh, <laughs> let's just say what it is. So it's uh, you gain two life and draw a card. Um, I don't know about this one. I think it's okay. Like the, the plus one is like an ability that we've seen. So we've seen it on Jace and we've seen something similar on Liliana. Um, the fact that it turns off activated abilities. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head is like Dustwatch Recruiter that you can't activate. I mean, Dustwatch Recruiter. You have the the two the two uh, mana energy mana creature uh, in green, uh, which mm. is you've been seeing a fair amount of play. You have okay. um, uh, I'm gonna forget it. The, there aren't a ton. The uh, the uh, Displacer. Okay. Um, sure. So yeah, th- there's a couple. Um, there's a couple. But I agree. It, it may. It's not that relevant. Um, it's a fine middle of the road planeswalker. Like for four mana, like it really has to push on the board. And I do think that with Fumigate being a five mana wrath, like the four mana blue white planeswalker just isn't as good as it was before. Like this certainly is no like Jace Architect of Thought that was like, you know, frustrating a board and then forces them to commit to like this doesn't force a player to overcommit that hard into Fumigate. Well, I do think it, it curves nicely into Fumigate though. Like you play this on turn four negative three a guy like hopefully they they play another creature to kind of overextend into your wrath that you play the next turn the next turn you draw a card my only issue is that there are vehicles yeah it lines up so poorly against vehicles yeah that's the thing like that's like like the the perfect scenario that you want and that's still like not going to be good enough sometimes um i I think it's more than playable but i I think it's a fairly average planeswalker yeah this is a card where like if the plus one was gained to and draw a card this card would be busted <laughs> but yeah like going down to like if you just play this and go down to two loyalty it's just like not i mean again it, like it, it will gain everything. you for life then which is is something to be said uh would you pay four mana for you know to gain four life draw a card mm. yeah. I, yeah i'm just not, i'm just not, not when you can this. pay five mana and draw two cards gain two life and have a two two flyer yeah we didn't even talk about cloud blazer but like i uh, i don't think that card's good enough but I don't think so be. either. Uh, I know, but I'm saying comparatively, it makes sense. So, yeah, I think Dovabond's fine. It, it, it'll find a home in, in some sort of blue white or Esper control deck, but I don't think, you know, it's not. It's not going to be again like what like Architect of Thought was to those decks. It'll it'll be some number and it'll be fine. Like it, I know this card's different, but it feels very. It feels a lot like um, 
What was the one we just had? The blue white one. Narset? Narset. Seems like a worse Narset. Ne- I don't think they're that comparable, but yeah, yeah they're both blue white planeswalkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about cool, it. Right. All right, uh, accurate. It? No, but um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think this card's like a trap. I think it's a trap card. I think it's uh, uh, it's a card that you you like you look at initially like oh this is a perfect control deck, but it just doesn't do enough. Yeah. And um, I don't think uh, it'll we don't see much play. I don't think I ever get to untap with it very often. Yeah. No. So um, move on to Combo. Yeah. Combo. Campbell, sweet. Campbell, <laughs> Campbell Cam- Campbell's console of soup, <laughs> Campbell console of allocation, uh, and cream of mushroom, <laughs> Campbell cream of cream of mushroom of allocation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just right. like the regular old tomato. Tomato, just some, some tomato. Just some, some Campbell tomato soup. chicken of noodle allocation. Um, oh, allocator of chicken noodle soup. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep doing this, so I'm it's, sorry. It's uh, kind of hilarious. <laughs> uh, so this is a, a generic and a white and a black for a two-three legendary creature, human soup advisor. Uh, you know, honestly, if you look at that art, he kind of looks like the soup Nazi. That's not even a joke. He kind of looks like the soup Nazi. Kinda Get that knows. prominent mustache. He man. Just says no soup for you. <laughs> man, I would, uh, man, I really love, like, I'm going to look for one of the Sam Stodd, you know, M-Files article and just see if, like, like just like, what do we call this guy? I don't know. Campbell? Make him look like the soup Nazi? Done. Just like, <laughs> I want to see that in there. Um, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, that player loses two life and you gain two life. Um, you know, the... This is an interesting card. You know, a two three for three is not super exciting, but that third bit of toughness is really, really important. Uh, we've seen a number of creatures see play based off of that alone. You know, something like um, uh, our oh shoot, I'm going to forget her name. The Murfolk Sylvan from Advocate? well, Sylvan Advocate, but that's a two man. I was thinking of the, the two three um, Jorian. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Jorian saw a little bit of play, and, and as a two three, made it just a lot more um, you know playable. And this one. You know that that trigger is pretty pretty awesome. Like if they if they point a removal spell at this, then you just you get some value. Uh, so it becomes sort of like a flag bearer in that sense, you know, a lightning rod. Uh, and if your opponent can't immediately kill it, and they they have to do something like I don't know, try to like, cast a spell that draws a card to find an answer or anything like that, then this card starts to get pretty gross. Yeah, um, I, I really like this card in it, as a sideboard card, um, and and I think it's uh, going to be you know pretty sweet in your you know, grindier uh, matchups for, for your. I think your your deck definitely has to be aggressive to to take the most advantage of it, because um, you you definitely want to already have a board while you're casting that guy and, and really be you know pressuring their life total. Um, but if they can't deal with it initially, they're they're definitely going to be taking some damage. And it, I mean, non creature spell man, that, that's so many things that the, the people are casting. You know, that's that's your vehicles, that's your planeswalkers, your yeah, you know, obviously I could name all the non-creature you know spell types, but that <laughs> seems a bit much. But um, there's just so many things that y- your opponent um, can you know lose life for uh, when <laughs> when everything costs like a, a Phyrexian mana. Then there's a lot of, a lot of things that uh, uh, definitely are less appealing, especially when you're gaining two life as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like this card for modern, like black white. You know, the Eldrazi. Uh, yeah, kind of. Hate Bears deck. Yeah, the, bla- uh, the Black yeah. White Hate Bears deck. Yeah, that, yeah, that's very true as well. Um, so, sideboard and standard, and, and uh, maybe side, it, still sideboard it, and modern. It's almost like an idol on against combo decks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's feel, just... it definitely feels like an effect that red normally gets, but um, it's pretty sweet. I agree. I, I like this card. I, I don't know if there's like a, a deck for it right now, but uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. There is a, I think Sam Black had a Black White Tokens list uh, initially, and uh, this card ha- had this card in the sideboard, and it was sweet. Uh, with the little bit of testing I did with it, so I'm a big fan. Cool. Alright, so next card here is uh, our, our second Planeswalker. It's Sahili Rai, so it's a generic blue-red for a uh, three-loyalty Planeswalker. has a plus one of Scry 1. Sahili Rai deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, has a minus two of create a token that is a copy of target artifact or creature you control except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Uh, the token gains haste, and then exile it at the beginning of the next end step. And then it has a minus seven ultimate of search your library for up to three artifact cards with different names, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Uh, so this is a very specific Planeswalker. Obviously, you want to play this uh, in a deck with artifacts. Um, I think... 
I like it a little bit better than Dovin Bond just because I, I think the payoff for this card is a little bit better. Um, however, it doesn't. She doesn't protect herself very well. Um, I will say that the minus two ability is pretty powerful, especially if you have something with uh, enter the battlefield trigger. Um, and there's also an infinite combo apparently with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you have liquid, modern. liquid metal coating. So if you make herself uh, into an artifact, you can copy herself. Yeah, and then, then you see, keep like, the copy. Like, like you see, like, you could disciple the vault, and then you could just make because every copy after that is also an artifact because of her ability. So right. then she makes a copy. The old one goes away because the legend rule, and you, yeah, they lose life, and then rinse and repeat. Yeah. yeah. So so it's pretty hilarious. Um, I, I also uh, like the, the Terminator Two esque like Sahili idea there, where it's just like. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, this one. Man, I don't know. It's, it is a three mana planeswalker, which is somewhat exciting. But it is, like I said, it's very specific in the deck construction. So we'll see. I don't think that it'll see a whole lot of play right away. But the door's kind of always open there. Yeah, I, I think you know it's important to note that we had a number of decks in the last format that were pretty dirtily, um, especially even some of the like the teamer teamer decks. It took a couple turns to set up. And for a while there, you had some of the uh, the blue red you know, visions decks, sort of like preying on those decks. Uh, and like I, you know, if you go turn two alchemist and turn to you know turn three Sahili, you know, and you could start scrying and also ticking up and shooting with that. Like that, that's a clock. It really is. Um, but if your opponent's really interactive, Sahili is not going to do very much. So I don't know. I hope I hope she sees play, but yeah, I don't have high hopes. Yeah, she's three mana, but she has some you know pretty specific requirements as far as deck building goes so mostly blue and red lands uh, and, and you know a bunch of uh, artifacts um to really kind of you know hit all the the notes uh, uh that she, oh you the know, panharmonicon she, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um i mean you could get that and then two you know artifacts that have into the battlefield abilities and then right they all see each other entering in so yes, well, yes, yeah. yes yeah so it would work i think at least i'd want it to I don't know if that counts. So much for moving at a brisk pace. Anyway, <laughs> All right. moving on. Uh, so let's talk about the uh, Ghostbusters uh, pack, uh, unlicensed disintegration. <laughs> uh, what they call those unlicensed particle accelerators? It's the same thing. Uh, this is a generic uh, black and a red for an instant destroy target creature. Uh, if you control an artifact, unlicensed disintegration deals three damage to that creature's controller. This feels like a card that we haven't seen in a long time. Like, just, you know, our putrefy or mortify effect is like, just kill a creature. And you know what? Maybe some upside, too. Um, this card's solid. It's going to see a ton of play in any deck that can cast it. Uh, and it's sort of like a breath of fresh air uh, when you think of the removal that we've had, I think, in, in you know, recent sets. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of like a Searing Blaze. So you can take out a creature... Maybe deal three, you know, take out a planeswalker at the same time. It's pretty, pretty powerful Ooh. play. Yeah, I mean, we we saw how powerful like draconic roar uh, could be as a uh, you know a card, and it, this even has you know wider um, applications yeah. as far as like playability to get oh, the yeah. upside. Yeah, I mean, like at worst, even if you don't have an artifact, it's just murder. Yeah, which was seeing some play in standard already. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit harder to cast, I guess, but I mean. It doesn't take a lot for it to turn this, yeah. you know, into and, just you know, harder or easier depending on what your you know deck and you know composition sure. is. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, but I like it. Solid card. Nothing more to really say about it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, next card we have veteran motorist. Uh, so this is um, another dwarf card. It costs a red and a white for a three one dwarf pilot. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, scry two. And uh, whenever it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, so it's kind of a weird card. Uh, you know, two mana, three, one is pretty aggressive. Uh, having it scry two and into the battlefield is a little weird, but I guess you got to find your vehicles. Um, but yeah, I mean, this gets pumped by Dapala. And uh, obviously is a very aggressive creature and also, you know, kind of pushes you to play vehicles. So... Yeah, I mean, if that's a deck, then this this will definitely be. Yeah, yeah the uh, the Scry two on a, an aggressive creature is pretty powerful. In all honesty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't like the one toughness on it, but um, like you know, if it's not going to be attacking, you know, it's it's great at crewing your vehicles. It makes yeah. your smuggler's copter into a four four, which then can attack into your opponent's smuggler's copter, and not have to worry about trading. Um, I think that uh, I think 
making your smugglers t- copters win in combat is going to be a key for the for the upcoming standard. So, um, yeah, I mean it's just a, a, a solid card. Uh, I don't know that I would play this just in a regular you know red white aggressive deck, but if you have you know a dwarf theme or you know more vehicles than normal, it's probably pretty good. Yeah. And then lastly in gold we have Voltaic Brawler. Uh, which is a red and a green for a 3-2 creature human warrior. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may pay an energy. If you do, it gets plus one plus one and gains trampled in a turn. And, uh, man, this card is really sweet. Uh, I think this card's going to see modern play. Yeah, a, a lot of people have been uh, stating that uh, it, it'll be pretty good in Zoo. Um, or, you know, the, the, the red-green you know, beats deck or, well, or something like that. I mean, this card and Burning Tramissary are best like... Best friends. Jump, jump, you know, jump air high five best friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, this card is just sweet. Um, you know, the energy, like, you, know, you talk about, like, oh, well, you know, yeah, it runs out of energy after two attacks. Well, you know, that's fine. You got to attack for four twice. Um, and then if you have any other way, you know, in modern, we, or in modern, in standard, we have, you know, there's definitely the, the basics there uh, for a green-red energy deck, and there's ways to get more energy. And just being able to attack, for, you know, with four with this guy, you know, is, is great. Yeah. You would trample. Without any help. I mean, yeah, you don't yeah, even need any other itself. energy cards. Um, yeah, I, I think the trample is pretty huge on this. Um, you know, I mentioned, like, there are probably going to be a lot of smaller creatures, and this just doesn't really care about getting chumped. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of power um, packed on a, you know, one creature. Yeah, definitely a pushed, uh, like, you know, draw. Uncommon. Like, a, yeah. a very pushed draw to playing green-red energy. Um, man, I'm going to be happy to open this, like, even in you know, Unlimited, too. You yep. Know? Oh, yeah. You can kick people with your energy legs. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, the number one bestseller uh, as far as energy drinks on that planet, Power Thirst. Uh, yeah, Power Thirst, <laughs> definitely. So so much energy. Oh, uh, man. Now in new flavors, like gun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's multicolor. We got some you know pretty good standouts. Um, and um, it, you know, the multicolor cards are always where you can like look at and see like, some pushed cards and stuff like that. So they're, they're fun to look at uh, before we jump into the monocolored cards. Um, but I think like we'll take Brawler is this is one of my standouts and um, uh, uh, disintegration as well. So two very powerful uncommons that I can, I can see seeing a lot of uh, standard play. And I think there's like uncommons I didn't talk about that have the you know, Cloud Blazer, uh, the guy that makes R- uh, one one thopters. There's a couple yeah. of combos. Yeah, that guy. virtuoso. Yeah, that, that guy. There's like there's at least one infinite combo that you can assemble in standard. Uh, that will will do. It, it's pretty convoluted, but it, it is possible. So it requires the modules and like a panharmonicon, and then you get energy for putting a thopter into play. And then yeah, it's doable though, and it's cool. So. Is it though? Is yeah, it doable? it's cool. Uh, yeah, it is doable. The cards exist. You can I, put them all together. I'm not. We're not saying it's easy. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know if you ever done with those kind of like logic puzzles. Like sometimes you just jam the pieces together, and then you say, "Oh, that's stupid. No one can do it." But then you see the guy next to you who can do it. And you you hate that person. Like, you wish that person wasn't in existence anymore. But you respect them for getting it done. <laughs> sure. it's That's the same analogy, right? I think so. You're All close. Right. You're close enough. Oh, man. Oh, sweet. I'm so excited. Dave gets the, the first card red, so I get yeah. that. I get uh, we don't need to talk about it. No. Nope. <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> like how that lined up. <laughs> All right. So the first red card we're going to talk about is Cathartic Reunion. No, Nalar Hugs. Nalar Hugs. Uh, <laughs> it's a generic and a red sorcery. Uh, as an additional cost to cast Cathartic Reunion, discard two cards, and then you draw three cards. So this is uh, kind of like a supercharged, tormenting voice. Yeah, it, um, it's weird how, like, if if it's you just discarding one card, it's tormenting. But if you're discarding two, it's cathartic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I want to talk about this mainly through the scope of modern. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if this will see play in standard. We, we don't have goggles anymore, so can't go too crazy with it. Um, but in modern, uh, the dredge decks may want to play this card. Uh, being able to discard two dredgers and then getting three draws, like the extra draw, you know, compared to uh, Tormenting Voice, really, I think, may push it uh, over the top. Now, not all the dredge decks have been playing that card, so we'll, we'll wait and see, but I think it's uh, something that can be considered. And that so that's basically I think people will, will certainly try it I'm, I'm really interested to see like what happens with the the modern uh, classic uh, this weekend uh, I wonder if like that that's when we see like oh dredge is just busto because because of this yeah, card I, I don't think this really like breaks dredge in half but it's just like it's another option for that deck if you want to go that route so I mean it's something that 
could potentially let you dig deeper into your deck with just one, you know, with one card. Yeah. Um, so that's that's it. I don't think it'll be standard playable, but Pro- probably. Probably not. I, there's been a couple decks that are in, very interested uh, that I've seen in playing both of them, and then they're still playing like things like Haunted Dead, uh, and, and like really and, and like Drownyard Temples, and like okay, like, sure. I think there's a standard deck that could do it. Now, granted, mm-hmm. you're spending a lot of your early turns just but, drawing cards. It's a lot of dirtles. It is. It really like, is. Well, like but, I said, I mean, we don't have goggles anymore. If you had goggles, that's a way that like you can turn those into like actual card advantage. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, well, I mean, again, like Drownyard Temples and. Um, Haunted Deads are yeah. also ways to do that. It's pretty slow. You're, no, you're not yeah. wrong. But again, I, I, I okay. think I think you will, I, don't be surprised if someone does cast them okay. against you. No, I, I feel you. So. All right. Oh, man, now main event. Yep. Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Uh, this card was designed for me. <laughs> uh, this is red, red, and two generic for a four uh, loyalty Planeswalker. Chandra. Plus one, exile top card of your library. You may uh, cast that card. If you don't, Chandra, Torch of Defiance, deals two damage to each opponent. Plus one. Add two red mana to your mana pool. Minus three. Chandra deals four damage to our creature. Minus seven. You get an emblem with, whenever you cast a spell, this emblem deals five damage to our creature or player. Um, I think it's interesting that the emblem deals the damage there. I didn't read that before. Like, there are ways that you can prevent damage from a source, but, like, it's worded strangely. Like... Huh. I think like a lot of times, most that that's where the the damage comes from. Yeah, is, is I guess emblems. it has to. I just never thought about it. But um, it's a it's a colorless source of damage, though. Yeah, that is, fact. man, that is interesting. Ghostfire, man. Go, woo, uh, man. She still knows how to use it. Yeah, uh, very very true. Uh, yeah, you know, we talked about Chandra when she was first revealed. She's obviously supposed to be the while, while Sahili is the face of the set. Chandra is supposed to be like the she's the draw. She, yeah, she's she the marquee. Is, she's the gun show. Uh, and I think she delivers. You know, um, I think you saw for the first few weeks here multiple like players, like you know, like who were like writing lists on different sites. Like, if it had if it had mountains in it, there was probably four Chandras in it. Now, testing has shown that I don't think that's ultimately true. Um, but she's very, very good. Yeah, when when she's good, uh, she's good. Like she she will draw you multiple cards or like still push through damage. She will help you cast. Um, more spells or bigger spells, uh, but I don't think that she's just universally good. I, I think that um, in in a lot of ways, depending on what you're playing, she is uh, a sideboard card. Um, I, I know that, like you know, aggressively speaking, she's definitely more of a sideboard card than something you want to play main, in my opinion, uh, just because uh, you have Gideon uh, in, in your aggressive decks, um, or you have more you know cars that you can play. <laughs> Flywheel cruisers. Uh, instead of her, if you want to be aggressive. But um, uh, I, I really like the card. The, the few times that I've got to cast it and, and test with it, and um, uh, as long as you're, you're you know you're playing against one of those right matchups, she lines up really well. She, she has felt a lot like Sarkin felt to me, uh, Sarkin Dragon Speaker, when it yeah. first came out. And Sarkin was always at its best if you could clear the board, throw it down, minus one to get rid of the last creature, and then untap with it. And she feels much the same way. Granted, if you can put her onto an empty board and tick up, yo, she's she, that ultimate is real. But I will say that uh, the difference between Sarkin and her was Sarkin was in a format where you didn't have uh, Manlands. And that is, I think, the only downer for Chandra, where there's going to be a lot of boards where you just, you want to, you want a Flame Tongue Kavu, uh, but then their land kills your Flame Tongue Kavu. Uh, so, uh, she's very, very good. Um, she, her man, even her mana ability does some crazy things. I've seen some of the aggressive decks, uh, you can, like, I, I've, you know, have, having cast a couple times, you can play this, tick up, and <laughs> surge a Bushwhacker. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> you can tick up and play a oath, an Oath of Chandra, and then the Oath of Chandra will trigger at the end of turn. Uh, so uh, I don't I think it's you, you. I don't think you can discount that, especially when we're in a format where we have a bunch of six mana mythics uh, as well. So I, I think it'll take a little while, like for everyone to figure out the best way to use her. But unlike other planeswalkers, where like they won't see play until people figure it out, they're just gonna j- jam her in a bunch of decks until they figure it out. So yeah, I just want to say like I, I really like the design of the plus one ability. Oh yeah, that like so it's a little bit different than um, Chandra Pyromaster where you just could play the card. So if you exile the land, you could play it. You can't play lands off of this ability. Um, but it, it also creates a little bit of tension because, like, you may not want to cast the card. Right. Like, you know damage. what I mean? To deal the damage. Um, and, you know, she can kind of keep other Planeswalkers in check a little bit 
with that. Uh, um, it's important to to note as well, and um, I, I don't think like I don't think I realized this until obviously I had a chance to like play with the card. Uh, but you have to make that decision. Like you don't you don't yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah. Power Master, you had the yeah, you could play it the whole turn. Like it just sat in exile, and you could cast it as long as like for that the rest of that turn. Oh. This one has to be done right then, and that yeah. is a huge difference in playing. With very, this very much so, because you can't just be like, "Well, I'll do this, see what I get," and then like kind of go from there. You're like, "I'll do this," and I have to immediately make a decision on what I actually want to do. Uh, so like that it, it, in itself is is definitely different from Pyromaster. Um, so get used to that. Don't let people exile the card and like make other decisions. Um, they they have to make the choice of whether they want to cast it or not. It doesn't just like hang out and uh, you know indefinitely uh, for that turn. So, um, uh, but I for sure think that the uh, the the card is is sweet uh, is good is definitely a little bit overhyped at this point in time um, and uh, will uh, definitely see play though. So I'm a fan. But I I think we're good to uh, to move on here. Um, uh, next up we have harnessed lightning. I was just going to mention Combustible Gear Hulk real quick. Don't play that card. Yeah, uh, <laughs> card, 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 card not good. It's not good. Comparatively, other Gear Hulks and, and honestly, most other cards in the set, mm. not a fan. Okay. All right. Harness Lightning. Uh, <laughs> generic in a red instant. It says, choose target creature. You get three energy. Then you may pay any amount of energy. Harness Lightning deals that much damage to that creature. So... On its own, if you have no other energy cards in your deck, this is a two mana instant three damage to a creature. Not the worst thing in the world. Um, three toughness was kind of the magic number in the last format. You know, we had you know Reflector Mages and uh, Sylvan Advocates and you know, Flamehole Pacifist, all kinds of stuff, right? But it's it's a lot better than that. Uh, so if you get energy from any other source, whether it be Aether Hub. Um, anything like that, you know, it can deal way more damage. You could take out a Gear Hulk with this, potentially. Um, also, I mean, the fact that you don't have to use all the energy, I mean, you could take out, you know, a two-toughness creature and have an energy left over. So, like, you can u- use that with your Aether Hub. You could save it for the next Harness Lightning and deal more damage. I think this is a really sweet card, and I, I do think um, probably one of the most important interactions is going to be the fact that it's an instant and you can take out Smuggler's Copter with this card. I think it's going to be pretty important. In the upcoming format, uh, that interaction alone has caused us to reconsider removal we're playing in our decks for this weekend. Um, I do want to point out: I know this card is worded real or weirdly. If the creature dies, like before this, you know, like, like in response to the spell on the stack, you don't get any energy. I know it says you get energy before the damage is dealt. It's still a spell with a single target. It's in the because, release notes. Yeah, because the, the spell fizzles. It's fizzles. So you, you don't, don't get any energy. I've had people get very upset about this, and I've I've had to, in, in testing with people, have had to like keep the release notes out at certain times and just be like, no, read this. It's still a spell with a single target. If it fizzles, you get no energy. And if you're counting on getting that energy, be careful of what you target. Now, that being said, I mean, if your goal is to just kill whatever it is that you're pointing it at, then, yeah, then you're, you're, you're accomplishing that Then anyway. you're fine, yeah. So... But I seen like I, I I had a person like concede when they pointed at a Thopter token because they needed the, they needed two additional energy so they could attack with two of their brawlers, and they pointed at a Thopter and I had a, 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 a Pia so I was like sack it and then they were like uh, I was like like oh, like I guess I lose then it's like yeah you do <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, but I, I think this is, you know, solid creature removal and um, surprisingly playable in more decks than you think. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of the best energy cards in the set, I think. Yeah. Um, Plus that art is sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah sure. Travis, Travis Wu, you know, just... Uh, just says, he's already wearing sunglasses. He's saying deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next up we have uh, Inventor's Apprentice. This oh, is... Uh, Nerd Ape. Nerd Ape, yes. <laughs> ah, that's great. Which is the... Uh, this was the, the, the card's playtest name, which is amazing. Ah, oh, man. Uh, so Inventor's Apprentice is uh, a single red for a 1-2 creature human artificer. Uh, it gets plus 1, plus 1, as long as you control an artifact. Uh, I think the one thing compared to Curd Ape is it's, already, it's actually a 1-2 by itself, which we go back to our Bomat Cruiser. Here's another <laughs> one drop for... Yeah. A 1-2 for 1. But, uh, yeah, this card uh, is exactly what you want if you want to play the aggressive artifact deck. It, it goes really well with the like, Toolkit Exemplar. And, um, you know, does everything you want to do. Also... By nature of surviving things at Kozlik's return, 
you know, as a two three makes it pretty valuable. Um, so I've been I've been really happy with this card. It's a uh, I don't know, it, you know it's, not, it's obviously not like game breaking or anything, but it's exactly like the perfect kind of role player the deck like that needs. And honestly, the kind of creature that like you know we talk about Curd Ape, you know they don't they don't do that as often anymore. So like whenever they put a card like this, the payoff may very well be worth it. Yeah, sure. It's a uh, it's kind of unfortunate because like you know the, there's a cost to playing this card. You have to make sure you have a, a certain amount of artifacts um, to play. It's not just like you know, Curd Ape, where you're like, oh, I'm definitely going to be playing Forest. So, <laughs> um, so it's a, it's a little bit different in that facet, but uh, it's still good enough. And we'll, we'll, yeah, I'm, I've been a big fan of this card ever since I started playing it. So, it's okay. I was going to say, I, I imagine turn one this into turn two Smuggler's Copter is going to be a very common yes. play yep. pattern yep. <laughs> in the new format. Uh, it's also it, it's the right creature types. It's a human, so if you want to play it with humans and values of it, there you go. It's an artificer too. So if you want to play it with your goggles, it counts for that too. So th- this card will definitely find a home in a lot of aggressive decks in this format. I'm, I'm happy to see it. Yep. And, you know, you never know, depending on how the format goes, it's the kind of card you can look at in modern some, at some point, too. So Potentially. You, you, have, you have things like Kaldatha Red that show up every now and then. <laughs> they might be excited about this card. Hey, you back off. Kaldatha Just Red Just because you week. played that deck doesn't mean... It, it's, it was a deck for a little while in modern. It, it's disappeared it was, for a while, but a there's thing. always a chance. It's, it's bubbling right below the surface, waiting mm, for goblins yeah. to erupt. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Keep, keep bubbling. Three of them for one mana. Let's talk about another uh, sweet energy card. Uh, it's Lathnew Hellion. Lathnew Hellion is uh, two generic and a red for a 4-4 four, four haste. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy. And then at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice Lathnew Hellion, unless you pay two energy. So um, uh, obviously a very aggressive creature um, lets you get in there for four. And then, uh, you know, if, you, if it doesn't die in combat, you can keep it around for another turn by paying the energy that you got um again i mean you can combine this with other energy cards to just keep it going for multiple turns if you want um or if you want to use the energy you know for something else you could just let it die at the end of turn so i like that it gives you some options and uh you know three mana four four haste is uh pretty aggressive now yeah at minimum getting two attacks in with it like it's a good it's it's a sweet curve card yeah now i will say it's Probably not as good as some of the similar cards we've seen over Magic History. Like Hell's Thunder is one that comes to mind as like a card that was, you know, not not a permanent creature. It's just kind of more of a uh, a burn spell disguised as a creature. <laughs> um, this one, you know, not not having any kind of evasion kind of hurts it. Um, you know, I expect there to be a decent amount of like servos and thopters and things like that. They'll be able to chump block. So, I, I think the trade off there is that you get that four toughness as opposed to the traditional like one toughness in Trample. Um, so yeah, I can get chump block, but it, you know, whereas like a creature like um, you know, like any of the sort of ball lightning effect can you know can also get traded off depending. This one, this one's built so that you can keep it around if you want to. Right, right. Um, but we'll see. I mean, this is one um, you don't necessarily have to be an energy jack to make it work, though. It is obviously better if you have other energy cards. But um, yeah, but we'll, we'll see how the format shapes up. I think this is one of those uh, contextual, like it depends on the context of the format, like whether it be good or not. So mm-hmm. I can certainly see some sweet plays with this and Harness Lightning, where like you play this and then you get the two energy, and then you Harness Lightning something for five and crack in for the the last bit of yeah, damage. Yeah, that's sweet. So yeah, I like it. Um, I, I think like just having another like big hasty guy uh, for red is 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 probably pretty good, and um, you know really helps the red green energy deck try to become a thing. Uh, are we really going to talk about Madcap Experiment? Nope, because I want to talk about PNLR. Fair enough. Well, I just wanted to mention the uh, interaction in Modern. It has an interaction with um, um, Platinum Imperion. Platinum Imperion, but... Okay. That's it. Is that, is you, that enough? A, you can get an 8-8 eight, eight, All right. Uh, for 4 mana. And Modern. You can get an 8-8 eight, eight for 5 mana in Standard. We're really going places. <laughs> Uh, no, I agree. It's the kind of card that can combo off a little bit, but I I don't really want to talk about it. Okay, that's fine. Because I want to talk about PNLR, because I get the whole Nalar family. They <laughs> they're really like my family in a very adoptive and not in any way literal sense. Very fictional sense. Yes, in a very fictional uh, like I want this to be a thing kind of sense. Um, so yeah, PNLR is very sad because it's just Pia. We had Pia and Kieran. Kieran's dead. Sorry, everybody. Womp womp. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, if you couldn't tell, uh, it, this is not a card that symbolizes divorce. <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> I'm just making sure people know. Okay, uh, so this is a red and two generic for a legendary creature, human artificer. Uh, Pia is a two-two. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a one-one colorless uh, Fopter artifact creature token with flying. So again, you know, she got one, he got one. All right. Um, she has a couple, couple abilities. Tar artifact creature gets plus one plus zero until the turn, and that costs a generic and a red. Uh, and it also has an ability that costs just one generic. Sacrifice an artifact. Tar creature can't block this turn. Um, I really, really like Pia. Uh, her abilities are all very relevant um, in put it, pushing through extra damage. And, and the falter effect is something that's been, you know, and again, in a format where we're seeing a lot of big gear hulks, um, when your opponent wants to spend a ton of mana to tap out for a big fat creature, Pia's here to let them know that we just don't care. And it feels nice. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, Pia and Kieran together were a better card, I think, oh, overall. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah. but, but even as, uh, you know, when we look at Pia and look at the abilities, uh, I, I still think that uh, card is yeah, pretty sweet. And I'm um, surprisingly versatile, um, especially the, the can't block ability. Um, don't uh, underestimate that. I mean, in an aggressive deck, that is, you know, that's what wins and loses games. Um, so I really think that uh, the card's going to be sweet. And uh, I'm obviously testing with a lot of them, playing with a lot of them. And uh, yeah, uh, I think this card is uh, going to be, you know, very, very, very constructive playable. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to be the, the modern staple that P and Karen. We're, we're no, 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 unfortunately no. not. But uh, I, I think it'll be a standard staple, and it kind of does a lot of things you want to be doing. As yeah, and they're they're only a dollar right now, so yeah, I was so I, yeah, I snapped those up. Uh, I I, I want to point out too that like this as a legend, like I was when in testing, I was where like how many do I play? I've been very happy to play four because her abilities are so relevant. She's the card that eats the removal spell, and you get a thopter, and then you're happy to play another one. So I've been uh, I've been really happy with with all the abilities that she has. So, yeah, good card. A um, lot of abilities st- uh, stapled onto a you know pretty efficient creature. For sure. Uh, next up, we get our uh, uh, typical dragon of the set uh, in uh, Skyship Stalker. So this is what um, the Sovereign's trying to blow up, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> this weird tiger shark. Or Tiger Dragon, I mean. <laughs> tiger Dragon. I don't know, it's a Tiger Shark, I'm sorry. <laughs> shark Dragon. <laughs> so is this now the only dragon in Standard? Do we have any other ones? There yes, were... there's a, the Valakut one in... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Well, oh, we had, yeah, we had yeah. a lot of dragons. Terror of Valakut or something like that. <laughs> we had a lot of dragons, like like a lot. I, uh, so rotating like, we had out. a set that was called Dragons of Tarkir that's rotating out. So, so. I think like our, the Welcome decks are still legal, right? What the welcome decks, the, the 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 way that like Borderland Marauder is technically standard legal right now. Well, those no, those rotate with uh, Origins. Do they? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I was going to say, Sh- I was like, I was like, Ship of Dragon. <laughs> it would still technically be legal, but rats. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, Skyship Stalker is uh, two generic red red for a dragon. It's a three three flyer. Um, it has three activated abilities. So the first one is red. Uh, it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn, so it has fire breathing. Uh, it also has pay a red to give it first strike until end of turn. Uh, or you can pay a red to give it haste until end of turn. Um, so this one is kind of dependent on the kind of removal that we're going to see. Like if there's a lot of like harness lightnings, this probably isn't going to be great just because it dies to that. But, um, you know, gives you a, a way to, you know, sink your mana. You know, if you're playing like a, maybe like a top of the curve in a, in a red deck, in a red aggressive deck. You know, can often come down as you know a three-three haste, and then can threaten a lot of damage on the next turn if it doesn't die. So, uh, this one is a decent card, but I, I'm not sure how, how much. This the is issue with this card is that it's fighting with really, really good four drops in the decks you want to play it in. Like, you know, is are you playing this over Chandra? Yeah, you know, maybe for financial reasons, absolutely. Uh, but like over Fleet Wheel Cruiser, mm-hmm. over Gideon. Right, like your your four mana options are pretty specific here. So yeah, I I do think that like at five mana, this card having haste, you know, we have a lot of like people said like wow, we got a lot of really powerful planeswalkers in this set or in in this you know in standard right now. But this set has shown us that they are okay, like they are understanding that and they want to give us a lot of hasty things that will take them down. Um, I think this card could see play, but I do think that it's it's three three body for four mana does put a strike against it. 
Uh, I, I don't know why this card just doesn't have haste, like, naturally, uh, in, in my opinion. I, I, why do you have to pay a red to give this card but, haste? Let's be honest. It looks cooler with three abilities on it. Uh, like, three <laughs> activated abilities. I guess. But, I mean, like... It's like uh, a Morphling. Yeah, it's Morphling Dragon. Y- you remember when uh, they printed this card in Battle for Zendikar? Uh, it was called a Coom Firebird, and it was a Mythic, and it's a 3-3 Flying Haste. And uh, it has to attack but, each turn of Fable. Yeah, that's, it's not a dragon, though. Well, not as cool. And, yeah, Fire Breathing the First Strike are better 